to Chairs No Waiting, episode number 413, Susan Oliver. Two Chairs No Waiting is brought to you each week by the fine folks over at Weaver's Department Store. Drop by over at Weaver's and pick up some of the great things they got there. One of the things you will not want to miss is the definitive Andy Griffith Show reference. Great book. If you're a real student of the Andy Griffith Show, it's got great material in it. I know you'd love it. Head over to weaversdepartmentstore.com and check it out. Two Chairs No Waiting is also brought to you by donations from listeners just like you. And we'll be featuring our Patreons later, but I didn't look up the right ones. So I could just, uh, yeah, I'm not going to name one because uh, I don't want to name anybody. But I want to thank all our patrons over at patreon.com. If you go to the Two Chairs No Waiting website and click the link to become a patron, you can help support the show too. Folks, my name is Alan Newsom, and I am so happy to be back here in Mayberry with you guys again this week. It's always a lot of fun. And we're going to talk about Susan Oliver. Uh, because uh, uh, Susan Oliver, if you don't remember, well, she was the uh, prisoner. Uh, was it prisoner of uh, prisoner of love? Is that what it was called? Yeah, the episode, you know, where she was the prisoner there in the courthouse, and Andy was, and Barney were kind of fighting over who got to stay there with her, and yeah, you remember that one. Anyway, she was uh, she was on that episode. So tonight, before we get started on that, I wanted to go into every week for this year in 2017, we've been hearing from Randy Turner. Randy Turner from the Gomer and Goober Pyle Comic Book Literary Guild. It's a Facebook page. If you go and look for Gomer and Goober Pyle, you'll find it on Facebook. He's been doing Today in Mayberry History. And so for us, as you know, if you've been listening to the podcast, he's been doing this week in Mayberry history. And so we want to go into that right off the bat because he's going to lead right into our topic today. So uh, Randy, thank you and uh, take it away. Let's see. I want to get the music up. Oh, he's got re- intro music. So cue the music. Welcome to this week in Mayberry history, a report by special correspondent Randy Turner of the Gomer and Cooper Pyle Comic Book Literary Guild of the Mayberry Historical Society. Bert Mustin was born on February the 8th in 1884. Bert is best known to us as Judd Fletcher, an old timer who was a common fixture around town. When the need arose, he also played other characters in Mayberry but to most of us, he will always be Judd. While Bert was not the oldest actor to appear on the Andy Griffith Show, he holds the distinction of being the oldest actor to play a recurring character. In his final Mayberry appearance, he was 82 and a half years old. Throughout the working life years of most, Bert was a salesman. He did not begin acting until 1951 at the age of 67. He went on to have a long second career as a sought after character actor, appearing in over 200 films and TV episodes. He's fondly remembered as Gus the Fireman on Leave it to Beaver, a role he played 14 times between 1957 and 62. He also played recurring characters in the TV version of The Great Gildersleeve in the 50s, Petticoat Junction in the 60s, and All in the Family in the 70s. Bert was still acting near the date of his death at the age of 92 in January 1977. He had made three appearances in the TV series Phyllis throughout 1976 and announced his retirement from acting while filming the last of these episodes. In the series, Bert played the recurring character Arthur Lanson, who had married Phyllis's mother, Sally Dexter, played by Judith Lowry. Judith passed away just one week before that episode aired on December the 10th, and Bert passed away the month after it aired on January the 28th. Susan Oliver was born on February the 13th, 1932. Susan played the attractive, unnamed female prisoner in the episode Prisoner of Love, which aired just three days before her 32nd birthday. 
an unusual episode. It portrayed Andy very nearly falling prey to the prisoner's charms and acting improperly in his job as sheriff. Though perhaps it is explainable, as Andy was correct when he said she definitely did not look like a boy. <laughs> While my personal approach is that the canon of the show consists only with what was actually broadcast, it is interesting to note that in the script, the prisoner's name was Angela Carroll. Susan is best remembered as playing Hank Williams' wife in the 1964 film Your Cheatin' Heart and as Vina in the Star Trek two-part episode The Menagerie. That's it for this week. As always, thanks for listening. And remember to take Andy's advice and go out there and act like somebody. All right. So remember, if you don't, if you're not on Facebook and you can't, uh, you can't uh, get on Facebook to get these daily reports, you can go to Turner's Grade, T-U-R-N-E-R-S Grade, G-R-A-D-E at gmail.com. Send him an email and he will send you a link to these uh, great reports. So thank you very much, Randy. So listening to that report this week got me interested and learning a little bit more about Susan Oliver. Okay, so I, I started doing a little bit of research, went out and found information about her. I didn't realize, well, there were a lot of things I did not realize about her uh, that, you know, I, I just, I'm amazed I didn't know about. Now, I knew that she was in the original Star Trek series as, uh, as Vina, as he mentioned, and she played, uh, she was the green uh, Orion slave girl. Now, that's uh, a lot of people remember that. Uh, that because uh, in at the end of every Star Trek episode, they would show uh, photos, images from the series, and that that image was often shown as part of the series. Now, what I didn't know as I was doing research is that they did a documentary about Susan called The Green Girl. Uh, the Green Girl is the name of the documentary. Now, it was created, uh, I believe, about in 2000, I think, 13. I may be getting the date wrong. And so this is a DVD that you can purchase. It's an hour and a half. It's a full-length documentary about her. And as I, as, as I said, as I was doing research about this, I, I, I listened to the trailer. So we're going to listen to the audio of the trailer of The Green Girl because in it they give us a lot of information about her that I don't think I didn't know as a Mayberry fan, and you might have not known either. And uh, we may delve a little bit more into this. So let's hear, this is information from the trailer. So there may be, as we're listening, there may be parts that uh, is just uh, audio. I'm not sure. So let's, uh, let's go and go ahead and listen to this. For fans of the original Star Trek, there's no forgetting Susan Oliver. Susan Oliver's Vena is really kind of uh, iconic. When I first put up a website, I had more emails from people about Susan Oliver than any other subject. Who are you? You know who I am? She was on Wagon Train four times. Ah. Route 66. Susan was in three of those. She did an early Ozzie and Harriet episode. The Twilight Zone. Susan Oliver. You have Susan Oliver, who was almost always on the first choice list to be the female guest star in these shows. She was just so versatile, sort of like a chameleon, and for television, it was perfect. You liked her. You believed her. When the close-up was here, she was thinking. I think what counts is taking charge of your life. Susan Oliver makes final preparations for a solo flight to Moscow. She won five world records in flying light planes. She was one of the first women to fly the Learjet. I'll never know why she turned down a seven-year contract to Warner Brothers. Why isn't she doing a series? And there were very few actresses who were that prolific who didn't get a series. She turned it down. That is surprising. She didn't want to be locked into anything. She didn't want to be controlled. She wanted to write. She wanted to direct. I want to make films. Do you realize that in my 18 years in the business, I've never worked with a woman director? For a woman to direct a film would be like a woman playing professional football. That's how bad it was. She directed a MASH. That was a very prestigious show. Our crew just wasn't ready. Wasn't ready for a female director at that time. She should have acted in all kinds of things and didn't have that opportunity because she didn't behave the way they wanted her to behave. She was just so watchable and endearing. What happened? 
How did somebody who was that good not have the kind of star career that her star power sort of justified? All right, so that is The Green Girl. That is a, uh, a trailer for the, uh, for the, the documentary. Uh, so now I will have a link in our show notes so that you can go and watch that trailer, and you'll have links to be able to go out and buy that documentary if you're interested in that. Now, Susan Oliver, she had a big impact on The Andy Griffith Show, obviously, we know, because she, uh, you know, Andy and Barney, uh, you know, both, you know, they liked her. They liked her a lot. Uh, you know, they kind of fought over who was going to get to stay with her uh, there at the uh, the courthouse when she, you know, she was in jail there. And uh, you remember they hung up a curtain between uh, uh, right there in front of the, the bars of the jail cell. So it was like a sheet, really. And she's getting, I don't know, dressed or something behind it. And you can see their shadow and, you know, they're trying not to look. And that was one of the, one, the only times I remember on the Andy Griffith show that was really kind of like, Whoa, Andy, what are you what are you doing? Now she was uh, very attractive, obviously, but I didn't know, as they mentioned in that uh, in that segment, that she was a pilot. So we, uh, you know, I checked out and I started reading some about this. Uh, she had flown in an airplane, and uh, what really got her started was back in 1959. She was flying as a passenger upon uh, a, a Pan Am flight. It was a Boeing 707 uh, flying from Paris to New York City. And as it was flying along, something happened to the plane. Not sure exactly what, but it dropped from 35,000 feet to 6,000 feet. It dropped in the sky. That was the same day. It was on February the 3rd, 1959. That was the same day Buddy Holly died in an airplane crash. It wasn't that airplane, but it was the same date. Uh, that anyway, she she became afraid to fly, obviously. I mean, if I'd have been in an airplane and it fell from 35,000 feet down to 6,000 feet, I think <laughs> I might not want to get back on a plane either. Okay, so that I read that and I was like, wow, I thought they were saying she flew. Well, as I read on, she I found out she turned down jobs if it if she got a job offer. Uh, but she had to go and audition, but it was going to require a flight or some re something to get there. She would turn it down. So she turned down jobs. But eventually she uh, went through, according to what I've read, hypnosis to overcome her fear of flying. And then she was introduced to flying small planes, uh, little Cessnas, things like that. And she, after her first flight on a Cessna back in about 1964, she went out the next day and went to Santa Monica Airport and started training to become an airplane pilot. So she got her private pilot license. And, and over the years, she did other things. In 1967, uh, she, she became the fourth woman, the fourth now, fourth woman to fly a single-engine aircraft solo across the Atlantic Ocean. And she was the second one to do it from New York City. So she was only the second woman to fly an airplane, a, a solo, a single engine airplane from America uh, overseas. Now she was attempting in that case to fly to Moscow and they mentioned that I believe in the, in the thing we just heard. Uh, but uh, she was, she ended up having to go to Denmark because the Soviet government wouldn't let her have permission to land in their airspace or go into their airspace. But uh, anyway, she, she eventually got, she was contacted by Lear Jets and they wanted her to try to set some uh, uh, flying records, but she didn't, at least according to what I could find, she didn't ever actually have a flying record. But she did win a 2,760-mile transcontinental race, is an airplane race. She was a co-pilot back in 1970. It's called the Powder Puff Derby, and she became the pilot of the year in that. Uh, this is Susan Oliver, the prisoner. Uh, you know, I just, uh, I didn't know any of this. The only thing I knew is she was in the Andy Griffith Show and she was on Star Trek as well. Folks, there's so many things that we don't know about these actors and actresses that are on the Andy Griffith Show. And I just thought this was very interesting. I appreciate Randy coming up with the idea, talking about her because of her birthday being the uh, 13th of February. 
she also she became an airplane pilot. She uh, single engine plane, double engine plane. She got her license for both of those. She ended up with a commercial airline pilot license, uh, and then uh, she then went on uh, and wanted to learn how to fly gliders. So she she became a glider pilot as well. Wow. And actually, there's an episodes. Uh, there's episodes of the American Sportsman. You remember that show it used to come on, on uh, I think on ABC maybe, the American Sportsman. Uh, they filmed her getting her training to be glider rated, which I assume means you're getting your glider uh, license to be able to fly a glider. I don't know if you have to have a license, but you have to be approved to be able to do it. So anyway, I, th I, I thought that was pretty neat that uh, she had done all these things. She was in, as he mentioned, so many episodes of television that I can't even begin to tell you how many there were. She was only in one, well, she was only the, uh, I should say, she only had one movie that she was the star of, that she was the uh, headliner, and it was in 1957. It was called The Green-Eyed Blonde. She played Phyllis, Green Eyes was her name in that movie. And everything else she did was basically, uh, she was a role player. Uh, and, you know, they mentioned that there was there were offers to give her actual contracts, and she always turned them down. Anyway, I, I, I don't I hope you guys are finding this interesting, but uh, it was amazing to me. And then you found out she directed two episodes of MASH. So she became a director uh, she was one of the, not only is she a director, she was one of the original 19 women admitted into the American Films Institute's directing workshop for women. So when they first started having women become directors in the 70s, believe it or not, like they said, it was like a woman playing pro football at the time. Uh, she was one of the original 19 women who did that. Uh, so she ended up, as I said, she directed two episodes of MASH. Uh, and then she directed also an episode of Trapper Don John M.D. You remember that, the sequel series? It was of Trapper John from the MASH, from MASH, you know, supposedly worked at a hospital later. She did that. Uh, she directed those. So she became a director. Um, so anyway, just to uh, let you know, she passed away uh and on May the 10th, 1990. So we lost her uh, to lung cancer at that time. So, and she was active as an actress from about 1955 up through 1988. So that is Susan Oliver. So I hope, I hope you guys enjoyed that. I know I did. I enjoyed learning about her. There is, again, as I said, there's, oh, I didn't say, there's a book. So she wrote a book as well. I told you about the DVD. She also wrote a book called Odyssey, A Daring Transatlantic Journey. So she wrote a book that was about her flight as only the fourth woman to ever do this uh, from the United States to Europe across the trans transatlantic flight. So she, there's a book about that by Susan Oliver called Odyssey, Transatlantic Journey. I'm going to have links to that and to the Green Girl the movie, uh, both, uh, you can get them both on Amazon. We don't carry them. Weavers doesn't carry them. And so, yes, you can go there. And I'm going to have links to them so you can find them. But uh, they're both going to be available there in our show notes. So I uh, definitely want to encourage you, if you'd like to get them, uh, you can go do that. Now, the hardcover, the book, by the way, is going to be difficult because in looking, the book is uh, not in print and it's $99. So you're really, really going to have to want to read the book. But the DVD of The Green Girl is only $13. So if you're on Amazon Prime, uh, there you go. $13, no shipping. You're good to go. So anyway, I, I hope you like that. I, there's all kinds of information out there. You might be interested to go and read about this lady, Susan Oliver, who was our prisoner, but uh, you know, did all these other things that we were just unaware of as fans of The Andy Griffith Show. We're always trying to look up and learn more about these actors that made Mayberry come alive to us. And she was only on a one episode, but she was memorable. And uh, and as I've always remembered her from being the Orion Slave Girl. I mean, honestly, even though I know she's uh, 
she's a Mayberry person, but the Orion slave girl outfit that she wore as a young guy, that was very memorable. <laughs> and as a nerd, I'm a I'm kind of a geeky guy. So, uh, folks, I think that is all I'm going to give you tonight. Uh, I hope you have enjoyed this. And, and if you didn't, well, you know, I'll do better next week. Uh, so, But I'd love to hear from you about it. So you can give me a call at 888-684-8415. Or you can uh, drop me an email at floyd at imavery.com. However you'd like to get in touch with me, I'd love to hear from you. So go out there and read a little bit more about Susan Oliver. Find out more about her. And if you got some other folks that are a fan or uh, that were on the Andy Griffith Show you don't know much about, maybe send me something and let's see if we can uh, dig them up, find out what's going on and where they were. All right, folks, until next time, we'll see you here on Two Chairs. <laughs>